I'm delighted that you've joined us today. Uh, this is not a fun occasion. Uh, we will have more of these town halls because clearly we need, we don't have a room large enough to get everybody in. So we will schedule more of these. We're here today because it's time for a call to action. And uh, by the way, as I start, I need to identify that in the room somewhere is Paul Oquan, who is a member of our board of the University of Louisiana system. Paul's up there. He's been standing up and saying for some time that we have to speak out. And many of you have now seen the letter that I wrote and shared with you and that has been circulated over a five to seven parish area rather significantly. And uh, you're asking questions like why now, why not before? Well, Nichols as a regional university doesn't have the opportunity that bigger institutions do to voice issues. And sometimes we have lived with the conditions that we've faced, the budget cuts, one after another, in such a way that we just accept what's happening. And it has occurred to me as we went throughout the past weeks of the fall semester that there was a lethargy that I was feeling not only on the campus but in this region and across the state that people simply weren't speaking out. Something is happening to us in this state and if we are not going to speak out something's going to happen that is going to be damaging and to you the students it's going to be damaging to you now and it's going to be damaging to the future generations of students so it seemed time to speak up a few weeks ago on the i believe it was the 8th of september we had a meeting with our 10 legislators from our regional delegation Additionally, there were a couple of legislators from a broader part of the state that are alums of Nichols. And basically, it was a call to action saying that if we go forward with the same relationships with state government this year that we have had in the past, regional universities and regional parts of the state, like Nichols and South Central Louisiana, are going to be hurt and are going to be hurt badly. Please understand what I'm talking today. Obviously, I'm talking with a degree of passion and concern for an institution I care about, your university. But we're talking about life and culture in South Central, the Bayou region of Louisiana. We're talking about what's happened to us with the down, financial downturn of the past two years across this region. We're talking about the damage that's done to our, our culture and our economy and the people since the uh, BP oil spill disaster. We're talking about challenges to the future of Charbert Medical Center in Houma that affects our entire region and affects the quality of medical service at all of the other hospitals. <coughs> We're talking about what's happening in our public schools through K through 12. We're talking about our area technical schools and Fletcher Technical Community College, which is a partner of ours in providing education in this region. We're not simply saying that we need help in supporting or saving Nichols, we're saying it's time we talked about our region. Bluntly, folks, it's been the experience over my career that state government pretty much takes care of urban areas. It's the, it's the pressure of the population base and interest. So if you take a look at two and four year universities, that are in New Orleans, or you take a look at them in Baton Rouge, or you take a look at them in more urban areas like Lafayette, you see larger <coughs> complex structures, facilities, and services. You get to more regional institutions, and we're the ones that basically have to fight for everything we have. We've done some extraordinary work together in building this university over 62 years. It is a fine, comprehensive university with excellent programs. We have 100% of the mandated accreditations that are required of us by this state. We have moved from open admissions to selective admissions in a way that makes us all proud. We are graduating far greater numbers of students every year and a more rapid progress to degree, all of which is important. We have partnered with our local community college so that they can take on the two-year degrees that appropriately belong there. We have partners in such a way that students who need to be given the developmentals can get them at that school, and then they can transition seamlessly into Nichols and finish a degree. 
All of those things are expected of us, and we've done it. We are a model across this state of relationships between two and four year universities and a model for efficiency. But let me tell you, those models don't get funded for that success. We get recognized, but we don't get funded. So now is the time that we spe speak up. We're going to talk about doing that. Um, and you all know that these have not been good times for the last two years. For some students, you're finally realizing that this really affects you. It's 10% tuition increase this year, and it will be at least 10% a year from now on. And that's going to be shocking. For many of you, you're paying more and you're finding it harder to get classes that you need to have to graduate. You're seeing faculty positions not replaced. We're losing some of the best senior faculty through retirement or frustration or a move to another part of the country where they can do the job that they have spent their career get being involved in. You are losing, and that's why we're here. In the time like this, where things go bad and go wrong across the state, and in an institution like Nichols, it tends to bring out the best in good people. It also tends to bring out the worst in some people. We tend to tear each other apart. Why is this happening to us? Why not stand up and let's have a demonstration like we saw at UNO against the administration? Well, folks, the realities are what's happening, the reality is what's happening to us is happening to us from outside. It's happening to us from the state. And we need to speak up and convince people in this region that this institution, Fletcher, Chabert Hospital, they're important. They're historically important, they're important to the future, and we need to fight together for that future. <laughs> Our future is in the hands of this state government. We could stay quiet, as we've done recently, and we could leave it to Baton Rouge, whether it's state government or it's the governance of higher ed, the Board of Regents, and all of the boards of supervisors. We could let them handle this, but it's too late for that. Why now, you ask? Because if we wait until a legislative session comes into session in March and progresses to the end around, I think it's June 21st or so, if it's like last year and they don't make funding decisions on budgets until the end of the session and there's a fight between the House and the Senate and the administration as to what's going to happen, Small institutions like ours have to make decisions much in advance. And those decisions will be made. We will literally pull a trigger on what is necessary to protect this institution. We will do irreparable harm to this university, to the programs, the faculty and staff who care about it, and you, the students, who depend upon it. And for those who believe in Baton Rouge that you all can simply pick up and go to another institution, there are several answers to that. One, bluntly, we're a damn good university, and there are reasons for that. <laughs> I've known this since the first day I came here. You know, I would, I would love on a Saturday <laughs> afternoon at a football game to see that stadium full. And I used to blame LSU because everybody went to the LSU games or stayed home and watched the LSU games. I happen to know that's pretty true anyway. But uh, I also came to realize that our student population